It is Thursday. It is Therapy Thursday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Triffy. This is the Transforming Trauma podcast. And every Thursday, if live and the Lord wills, I show up and I try to offer something to help people learn how to think better, to feel better, and do better. Okay, I am a licensed psychologist in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm also a licensed professional counselor. I live in Atlanta, but I am from Dominica. Now, Dominica is not the Dominican Republic. We love them, but they're a completely different country. Okay, we are further south and we speak English and a French Creole. So come on in, welcome. As you come in, share the live. I have a lovely guest with me tonight. I am so excited because usually I am going over to her house and I started feeling like a just a bad friend. Okay, y'all, I started feeling like a bad friend. You know you're always inviting some of your friends over. You cooking for them. You making a nice little graph for them. Next thing, they're never inviting you over, not even for the room squash. Okay, not for the room squash. So, I have the lovely, 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 lovely Dr. Simone with us. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself to us, and we plan to have a lovely healing conversation. I'll tell you more. Yes, good evening, Dr. Trifi, and good evening, everyone who is joining us via the Facebook Live. I am Simone Matthew. I am an associate professor of psychology. And more importantly, I am Dominican to the bone. Um, I am very passionate about our goals. I think too many times that when we think of psychology, we only think of psychology for the purposes of solving problems. But we don't think of psychology in the sense of using it to achieve our goals. So that is my area of focus. So I'm kind of leaning more towards the life coaching aspect of psychology. So I wrote a book, Push Past and published it uh, back in 2020. And since then, I've been doing a lot of work in the space of motivation, in the space of taking those uh, lifetime dreams, that purpose you know is within you, and trying to help all of us to figure out how do we remain consistent in trying to achieve those goals? Because we all get started, right? We all get started, but somewhere along the way, things happen, life happens, and we put it to the side. So how do we remain consistent until the end is the question that my book answers. So again, it's uh, Push Past 10, and it's P-U-S-H-P-A-S-T-1-0 uh, com for more information. So again, Dr. Trifi, thank you for having me, and I look forward to being a part of this conversation this evening. Oh man, I am so happy to have you. I'm so happy to have you. And y'all, we're going to have a healing conversation. I know it's been rough for many of us and many of you who listen to me for the past two weeks, one day. Yeah, we're trying to take a little bit of a breather tonight, but not all the way. Okay, so Dr. Simone and I are going to talk about some sweet things, about some maybe not so sweet things for an hour. And then after that, you and I, we will talk a little bit more. Okay, so Doc, you actually said something that I wanted to ask about because lots of people know about clinical psychology, what I do. So the easy picture that comes to many people's brain is, oh, you're doing therapy, you know, you're doing evaluations. What is the school of psychology that you practice? Tell us a little more. Yeah, so it's really more uh, motivation. So it's really more along the line of wellness. So mm -hmm. it's looking at the overall person and not necessarily, I leave the hard work for you, Dr. Trophy. I really do. <laughs> I leave the hard work for you. And I want to do the fun, the fun things about having people explore who they are. Because I think once we truly know who we are at our core, that is where our goals and our purposes stem from. So I, I help them to discover what are you really trying to, to do in this life? And I like to put it this way because a lot of us have achieved so many goals and we don't really pay attention. You know, a lot of us have been through our education. We have attained degrees. We've 
either gone for high school or college or associate degree certifications, right? Those are goals because you had to put the preparation, you had to put the work, you had to maintain the discipline to be able to get there, right? Uh, raising our children, that's a goal to become fine young people, uh, yeah. achieving career goals, that's a goal. But then when it comes to some of the more challenging ones, like maybe weight loss, we don't associate the two and we have to. We have to associate the two because it's in the same way you apply the discipline, preparation, and everything mm -hmm. as it took to achieve the goals that I just talked about. It is the same thing that will help you to achieve the goals in terms of that weight loss you've been trying to achieve for the last few years or uh, getting back into college if that is your goal, financial um, independence is if that is your goal. So when you think about it along those lines, you start realizing, hey, how was I able to achieve these other goals, but yet I'm beating myself up thinking I cannot mm. achieve the goals that I'm now trying to achieve. So we have to make the association. So, you know, so it sounds to me like your branch of psychology, you make good people better. Yes. Ah. Yes. We might make sick yes. people well. And yes, when so you have to get them well, and then I take over. That's it. That's and then it. to me. <laughs> you know, you know. Last night I was saying that you know the best athletes they have coaches. Yes. The best athletes have coaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. So mm -hmm. your 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 doctorate now is in industrial and mm -hmm. organizational organizational psychology. So that is essentially the psychology of work. Yes. So it's, it's a very long title, Industrial Organizational Psychology, but it es essentially is, is the science, the, the psychology of work. So we talk about motivation again. We also mm -hmm. talk about the importance of leadership. Mm -hmm. And leaders, leaders are not necessarily those at the top, because many yeah. of us know that we are leaders in our own right, even if we don't get the recognition for being leaders. We mm -hmm. talk about conflict resolution. We talk about toxic work environments which mm. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to. So mm -hmm. I really enjoy it because I think so many of us spend so many hours working, whether we're working remotely, we're working in an office, we spend a lot of time at work. So it, yeah. it's become a passion of mine because um, just the amount of time that we spend and we have to have quality work environments. And now the new challenge for us as industrial psychologists is now the whole balance with the online working environment. So how does that change the dynamics of teams? Mm -hmm. How does that change the dynamics of leadership? How does that change the dynamics of conflict resolution? Yeah. Right? So it just added a whole other aspect to industrial psychology. And I'm somebody who loves to learn. I'm always curious. I want to know what's the next thing. So it is one of those things. It, it's never stagnant. And as a matter of fact, when, when my students come in and they, they complete the course, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. that's the thing they want to pursue. Because wow. it is such an evolving, it is such an involve, uh, evolving field. It's never yeah. a dull moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing that I thought about as you were talking was, now that we've made these transitions to a lot of home work, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. where do we draw the line between working from home and yes. real lives, like how do we yes. do we stop working? Will we be able to create? Yeah, and even, and even before the pandemic, that is a question I had to ask myself mm. because I've been working um, remotely uh, for the last, what, 14 years? Wow. And the, the boundaries get blurred because sometimes you end up working all the way through the night and yes. you, you have to think to yourself, wait, if I worked a regular job, I wouldn't be working at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the boundaries do get blurred. So you have to kind of pull back and say, you yeah. know what? Even if I can create my own hours, let me create hours that do not lead to burnout. <sighs> yeah. That's very powerful. Yeah. That is yeah. very, very powerful. Yeah, but I love oh, it. I love the work. I am so happy to hear you talk about that part of yourself, Doc, because we are used to seeing Dr. Simone on the radio station okay q i'm so sorry last night dr simone reminded me i i almost said a bad word i said a half of a bad word i'm so sorry i'm please okay. forgive me okay yeah, you're now, passionate. <laughs> you're passionate. So, yeah so doc you do a couple other shows and today you actually here to help me 
share with the people who listen to me your travel therapy, Dominica. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about travel therapy a little bit again. But give me a little bit and tell us a little bit more about where we can find you. So we can hear oh, yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah. well, like you, the easiest way to find me is my website. So pushpastend.com, uh, yes. P-U-S-H-P-A-S-T-1-0.com. And then it links to all my social media. But for the most part, I'm on Facebook. You know, yeah. I don't do Twitter. I don't really do Instagram. TikTok is certainly not for me. <laughs> but I am mostly on Facebook um, at Push Percent. And it's really about presenting motivational people. Mm -hmm. Because I think many times we don't realize that what we're trying to achieve, somebody else has done it before us. Exactly. People have come from where we come from. People have had the limited resources that we had. Yeah. And we were somehow able to figure it out. So I think the best way to motivate people is to put in front of them people that look like us. Yes. And one of the reasons I started the program is because I wanted more of our stories. Yes. Right? So yes. I was reading all this motivational information and it was all about people in America, mm -hmm. people in Canada, people in England. And I'm like, we have our own stories too. That's right. Why are our stories not being told? And when you hear stories from like Dr. Swinburne, Augustine, who is mm. like at the highest level of immunology, you yeah. know, I speak to all these brilliant people who have come from Dominica. And the other thing I always want to make sure we do as well is that we look at every level. So Absolutely. we're not just looking at PhDs and MDs. We look at the young people who are blazing their own trail. We look at the yeah. average person who has their own challenges but are able to overcome it. Because again, for me, the best motivational tool is our own people. Absolutely. Yeah. Because what one person can do, another person can do. It's just that we like to see it. We need to know it's possible for us. And then when we see people who look like us, I'm telling mm -hmm. you, one of the main reasons I have braved my shyness and decided, let me show up on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So our people, not just in the US, but I'm, I, charity begins at home. So my people from Dominica need to know they are psychologists who look like them. Yeah. And it's okay. And so we can start breaking the stigma and our fear about looking for and getting and receiving mental health support and treatment because we know the people who are doing it, they look like me. So they have my back. They're not weird and strange. They, they have my back. Right. Thank you to all the ladies and gents when you when you all join in um Kimi, i'm looking at the comments um kimi says you compliment each other i agree oh i do believe that let me tell you all yeah. we dr simone and i we met during mm -hmm. the pandemic yes we met on a, one of your push past 10 mm -hmm. shows. yeah um jeffrey recommended you i remember that jeffrey alexander, jeffrey alexander. Okay. Alexander. knew the both of us and said hey to Dr. Simone, have you talked to her? Mm -hmm. He said, have you talked to her? And mm -hmm. we just hit it off. It was so awesome the first yeah, time. And that, and that is what everybody should be doing. You should be looking for like-minded people who have the same goals as you That's and right. you should work together. I mean, I've lost, I've lost count of how many times you've been on my program. I know, right? Because every time I reach out to you, you say yes. And the same thing with you, if you reach out to me, I'm going to say yes, because that is what we're here to do. We're here to support each other and to support our own people back home. Absolutely. Charity yeah. begins at home. Yes. yes. Absolutely. So, so talking about home last year, I started this adventure really. I'm actually wearing my little t-shirt, you know. <laughs> my little oh, t-shirt. Nice. Oh, you meant t-shirts. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I, love oh. I love it. I love it. You should sell it. I'm getting ready to start you should. offering these for sale, okay? So last year, talk about changing pain, transforming trauma into beauty. Mm -hmm. Last year on Mother's Day, my kid's dad, my ex-husband, died really suddenly on us yeah, sorry, and yeah. yes and the kids you know i i'm like oh my god it's just me now with mm -hmm. them and i said i need to get some support essentially and for me support is dominica for me yeah. resetting and grounding myself is dominica mm -hmm. and that had worked for them in the past too because both of them 
spend their eighth grade year in Dominica. So mm -hmm. we said we're going to Dominica, we're staying for a month and we're just mm -hmm. doing stuff. So we were everywhere, even in the pandemic. But I saw how powerful the travel and the experience was for them to stop them from going into free fall. It didn't stop them all the way because grief is a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. And, you know, one event is not going to change their grief experience. But I'm telling you, it was so powerful. I decided to keep doing it when my fiance died now in December. Suddenly, I just, the, the, I was feeling so much. It's, it's a lot. But that has been, travel has been the thing that has made the most positive impact on my healing journey so far. So I, I'm, I've begun inviting people I love, people I care about, people I like, who have a travel experience to share what is their top five, what are their top five experiences yes. wherever they go, wherever they go. And I chose top five because my fiance was a top five kind of guy, mm -hmm. top 5% of, of women, Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so said, he just likes good things you know right, right. So i am so excited i cannot wait i would love for you to start sharing mm -hmm. why yeah and i think that is a great discussion to have but i also think that you are leaning towards a very important point and uh, because then it begs the question to our audience and let us say good evening i see uh emma thomas and Ed philip yes um, audience veronica pascal guys as you come in don't forget to share the live thank you for being here we'll take your comments in a little while that's but right think, Doc, for our audience the question they have to ask themselves is what is my therapy exactly. right? your therapy is travel and i think exactly. that is excellent that your therapy is travel and when we say travel you might be able to afford traveling outside of the country but if you live in dominica dominica is so beautiful you can travel anywhere in dominica and make that your therapy Doc, I post a one minute video of driving through Dominica. That thing has gotten almost 6,000 views. I saw it. From that yes. one video, people keep saying, oh my God, I can feel the breeze. I can close my eyes. I can feel the breeze. This scenery is so common. That is the yes. thing. Yes, absolutely. Going through the beauty of Dominica. Absolutely. So if you want to do travel therapy, you don't have to live Dominica. Exactly. So it begs the question, what is your therapy? Is your therapy dance? Do you like to dance? Is that yes. how you, you know what I mean? My therapy, you know what my therapy is, Doc. I like to work out. <laughs> <laughs> so that is my therapy of choice. Yes. What is your therapy? So it is yes. great because each and every one of us needs to have a therapy so when mm -hmm. times got hard, imagine that back in the day, maybe about, I want to say like maybe 15 years ago, I uh -huh. had a really bad breakup. Imagine I had yes. two gyms there, two. <laughs> <laughs> one in the morning and one at night. By the oh. time I got home, I was oh. so exhausted. I didn't have time to think about the ex-boyfriend and I got over him. That's right. That's it right. That's right. Therapy. So we have so, to find our therapy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Well, going back to what you said. So I think that for me, the first thing for, for this travel therapy is our people. Yeah. Mm. And you know, our people could have been number one, two, and three, because we have wonderful people in Dominica. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the kindest hearted people. And I don't just say that to flatter Dominicans. It is true. Yeah imagine we went to buy uh we went to buy a mattress mm. at one of the local um stores in dominica and mm. we wanted the mattress delivered the same day and they were like well you know we can't guarantee it's after 12 the guys are already out and mm. there was a young lady standing behind us in the line to pay and she was yeah. like oh let me call my boyfriend i said let, let you call your boyfriend, Why oh. you call your boyfriend? Oh. she said my boyfriend is the driver of the truck that does the delivery so let me see where he is uh -huh. do you know she got on her phone we completely forgot everything about that we left they were like well it's gonna come today it'll come tomorrow mm -hmm. we were downstairs waiting on our, on our transport she came back to us wow and she said, hey i just finished speaking to my boyfriend he will deliver the the matches for you today wow tell me where you live give me the direction you know we don't know streets not hard, so not hard enough we have to say sunny shop then turn 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 
And do you know he came and he brought the mattress? She didn't have to do that. Wow. She didn't have to do that. I but that, that just tells you how kind hearted Dominicans are. And you better not go anywhere and not say good morning. And I not know. They will put you in your place. Like, they will be like, well, good afternoon. <laughs> So our people is always going to be, in terms of the highlight of my trip, yes. from the airport to the supermarket, I am going to say the bank, wow. I am going to say number one is going to be our people. I love that. Right? And then number two for me is just the beauty of the place. It never gets old. It just never gets old. You just want to sit there and just marvel at the beauty. And you look at the mountains and you think to yourself, can you imagine? Those are the same mountains that our ancestors' eyes saw. So, Do you think about that? Oh, my God. I just got, oh. Do you think about that? Oh, these are the same mountains. And think of the emotions that ran through our ancestors looking at those mountains. Wow. For our Kalinago ancestors, it was promise and hope mm -hmm. because they were coming to a new land before slavery and everything yeah. else. Yeah. It was promise and hope, new opportunities, new land, mm. right? And for our African ancestors, the amount of fear. Yeah. That must have been in them looking yeah. at those mountains, not knowing what they were going to encounter. Mm -hmm. So when I look at these mountains, I'm looking at these mountains in a completely different way oh, than wow. a tourist would look at the beauty and the mountains and just the natural resources. We are so blessed. We are, I mean, it's mango season and, you know, I've been on a diet of mango and fish for like three weeks now, because there is still so much abundance. Absolutely. In Dominica, you know? So for me, those were like the two um, top things that yes. I saw. But unfortunately, you know, the third thing, Doc, is the level of poverty. Oh I my God. Honest. I have oh. to be honest. Oh, I have to be let honest. me, let me, so, so Ama says every morning she walks to Melville Hall and she just sits there and watches the Diablote Mountains in yes. awe. Yes. In awe. Yes. In awe. She'll be driving and stop her car and just mm -hmm. go in for a dip in the river with her clothes all the way on. I love this. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, that is, um, that is, that is powerful. Yes. That is powerful. And I don't know if you're like me, but every time the plane starts to approach Dominica, I get goosebumps. All I know, I looking know. Looking at the mountains, looking at the scenery, you know, I, I just know. get overwhelmed with emotions that are just like pure joy and happiness yeah. you know, to be home. But then you look at it and you look at the, 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 the level of poverty. And you what can't you just... Think? What are you seeing? What are you yes, seeing? People are people, just basic needs. People don't have jobs. A lot of people don't have jobs. And imagine this one lady, she, you know, I guess she's heard me on the radio a couple of times. And she literally walks all the way from Pottersville to Bathurst and she looks at me and she's like, do you have anything for me? Oh, wow. And I had blood because, I mean, you know, our dollar has to stretch very far in Dominica. And I told her, you know, unfortunately we don't, but it just tells you the level of desperation. Desperation. That people are experiencing that she would she would walk all the way from um, Goodwill and come to yeah. Bath State just to see if I could help her. Wow, you know what I mean. So so there's a lot of need, but I think, uh, and you know this very well. Um, I, I just think we have to find a way to embrace e-commerce, e yes, the digital economy, open up Dominica to beyond the borders of Dominica, and just get people opportunity and as a matter of fact the next roots connections that i'm going to do is going to be on that topic because you know i wish the fire right there i wished last night that we had more time because mm -hmm. I, will, I am like we can do solar we can focus on, on an area of need the world has and just mm -hmm. train our people it's got to be digital you know digital is opening so many doors Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody's got a phone, even if they don't have a PC. Mm -hmm. For the most part, you've got a smartphone. You can run a business 
yep. the new business on yep. your phone entirely yep. from A to Z. Yep. You know, there are many ideas I think that would fit in with our nature island persona or essence or resilience themes or green energy. Like what if we focused on teaching our young people how to build wind turbines? Yep. What if we focused on teaching our people how to work with solar? Like what if, I mean, like what if we focus like a laser, you know, on these emerging fields and, and became the place to go to for that particular mm -hmm. Because a lot of, you know, in marketing, everything I'm learning as I learn marketing is you've got to have your target mm -hmm. client, right? You, yep. you have to have a niche. And the more you have a niche and the more you specialize, the better it is for you. So I wonder, you know, how a lot of these things might help yeah, us. And the, other, and the other thing we also have to keep in mind is change takes time. Yeah. Change takes time. Yes. So the younger people may be more open to what we're talking about, but yeah. change takes time. So you have to be patient because for a while there, I was like, you know, I keep telling these people, you know, we need to be digital. We need to be, nobody's listening to me. And then yeah. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. Yeah. Change takes time and slowly but surely, if you keep consistent on the message yeah. and if you keep showing the examples, yeah. then that, because to me, nothing else matters in the world. If you don't have your health, yeah. And if you don't have your finances. Yes. What what, what else is 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 uh so important in the world? Your family, yes. But at the end of the day you still have to feed and support your family. Because life is too stressful yes. and anxiety provoking without the yes. security of your finances. Yeah. It's yeah. too stressful. Mental health mm -hmm. now starts breeding in that mm -hmm. kind of environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anxiety yeah. too high. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yes, and then the importance of security. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing I noticed as well, um, in terms of the top five, and I made sure I wrote it down because you know I came prepared because I know you're very professional. <laughs> <laughs> but but along the same line though, in terms of um income opportunities, mm -hmm. there's a lot of innovative people in Dominica. Mm -hmm. There is a lot. So you hear a lot about the young entrepreneurs and what they're yeah. trying to do to create their own path. And yeah. we've had this young man driving us around since we've been here. And what he has done, he's recognized the need. Yeah. And he's jumped in to fill it. And that is what you have to do when you live in Dominica. Exactly. So exactly. He said there are a lot of buses that have their usual bus routes. Mm. But what a lot of people don't realize is those bus routes are very static. So mm. guys go up and down from maybe seven to about like maybe two or three. And yeah. then after that, it is so hard to get a bus so what he started doing is doing the rounds after yeah goes around rose after when he knows that many of the buses have already left right he will go around and then he can now charge you because now he's a private hire exactly he can charge you a little extra for you one yeah to ride his bus to where you're going i think that's excellent yeah so you have to be innovative you have to be creative. And now you're seeing a lot of examples. And another example that I posted on Facebook, and I'm more than happy to give them a little shout out, is Flavors Grill. Because what is the biggest concern in Dominica? No lunch after two o'clock. Boy, I get so mad. I saw that. And I can never remember. Every year I go, I am shocked and surprised. When I'm in town and I go somewhere and I say, oh, you have any lunch now? And they look at me like, are you crazy? <laughs> They're like, but, but it's after two. I no, saw. We don't have no lunch. So you're talking about an opening that's wide. It's, it's there and ready for the taking for yes. somebody who's willing to sleep in and go yes. to sleep later. That's it. Yes. Change your yes. So, yeah. so they've created fresh healthy food wow. and they operate until six and sometimes 6 30. oh wow and those of us who are on vacation who don't want to cook every day exactly and we're wondering well where, where can i get a healthy meal it's right there it's behind the scotia bank which is now i think republic bank okay. it is right in the corner of that road 
Mm -hmm. So that if you're in town and you're looking for something healthy to eat after two o'clock, now you yes. have an option. So a lot of people are picking up on, you know what? I need to think outside the box. Yes. I need to be innovative. Yes. I need to recognize a problem and provide a solution. And I will earn an income. That's the answer. Yeah. Recognize, look around you. I said it, I, I, I brought a little post where I said something to that effect. I said, mm -hmm. look around in your community and yes. see what's missing and see yes. what people are willing to pay you for. Yes. Not a business idea. You got a business idea, Google GTS, you mm -hmm. will learn how to run a business. You'll see how other people are running businesses, even if you don't go to classes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And even if you want and you want to do classes, there are classes online. There's mm -hmm. YouTube University, there's Google University, every mm -hmm. all, all the information is there now. Now we have to start, like you say, using our creativity. Yep. Yes. And you're seeing you're seeing a lot of that I in Dominica. So so that is that is very very encouraging. And then of course you know number five ha number five has to be has to be the cuisine. I mean come on. The food, 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 fresh food, healthy food. You know I'm still very happy that we don't have a lot of fast food places. Yes. I'm still. But my daughter was asking me today. She's like, but mommy. There's no like McDonald's, no Chick fil A. She likes Chick fil A. She's like, there's no Chick fil A, there's no McDonald's, there's no Wendy's. I say, no, honey, we eat real food. The real food mommy cooks for you at home. That's what we eat in Dominica. We yeah, don't eat. <laughs> so I have to say, like, thumbs up that we still, you know, for the most part, the people who cook our own food. Um, yeah. You know, you go to somebody's house, you get a nice uh, plate of stewed right. chicken, some provision. Mm -hmm. A nice salad so you know those are my top five. Oh, i love that i love that i love that i love that dog yeah. thank you for it sharing a lot of therapy for me for real i'm telling you and without <laughs> even thinking about it you know without even thinking about it it's therapeutic you know mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons i really to me like my soul needs dominica when i need to oh yeah absolutely yeah mm -hmm. Amos says one of the things that will help the country is more of us plugging in Absolutely. My daughter mm -hmm. is 25 and U.S. born, fell in love with Dominica and is there permanently. I wow. love it. I love it. I've got my two ready. They're like, when are we going? When are we moving down to Dominica? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And her group of friends are activated. Mm -hmm. um, she says, however, the people are chronically depressed. Chronic depressed yeah. When we are there, they get a dose of energy. But after we leave, it goes. They crave yeah. leadership. Uh, we really need to plug in physically. I think mm -hmm. there's a remembering, I agree. I agree. remembering that has mm -hmm. happened. You know, people. What do you think? What, what is? What are your thoughts in response to that comment by Anna? Oh, that. Uh, let me just read it one more time. Uh, they're depressed chronically, have mm -hmm. craving leadership, and they really need to plug in physically. Yeah, there's a lot of need. There's a lot of need, and it all and it almost feels like people are very reluctant to talk to you. Oh. Because they're not quite sure, and, and and it's sad because all of it boils down to politics. Mm -hmm. So they're not quite sure on which uh, part of the political spectrum you fall. Yeah. So you will, you know, they will test. They will say something, oh. and it might be something a little bit opposed to the government. And then they wait yeah. to see a reaction. They're like, "Wait, let me see." Mm -hmm. And, and then if you don't, opinion. if you don't respond negatively, they just psh, yeah give it all to you yeah yeah give it all to you yeah 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 there's a lot of fear there's a lot of fear there's a lot of fear in dominica there's a what lot of people fears who are afraid to speak. You think? what are some of the fears you think well people are afraid to speak out people are afraid to talk about their particular situations oh, because wow. they're afraid of retribution but oh, this my. they're afraid that i might say something to you and it might get back to the wrong ears and i might, I might lose an opportunity that's mm. what it boils down to you mm -hmm. can feel it. You can feel it when you speak to people, right? You can feel they're reluctant to really talk about how dire their personal situation is. Yeah. Because they're afraid that either you might go tell somebody or somebody might overhear what they're saying. And people have a right to talk about their situations. Well, let me if ask I'm this. Doing well, I should be able to say I'm not doing well. I'm, I'm, I was about to ask you, as an industrial and organizational psychologist who works a lot with 
aspects of like problem solving mm. and conflict resolution and communication like how do you communicate your needs in a mm. way that you express your need because i think i see that a lot on facebook facebook gives me a good idea that a lot of our people are trying to express their needs mm. but sometimes where the, the need is being expressed it comes loaded with many, many strong feelings. And sometimes the hero loses the point because their emotions get triggered. Right, right. But I think I think it goes even beyond that because it's not necessarily that we don't have the words to express our needs. We have mm-hmm. the words. We're very articulate people. We're very educated and bright people. Mm-hmm. But it's the overarching fear. Of right? reactions so, that come yes. in response to the words you yes. say. So we know what we want to say. We have the words to say it, but what are going to be the consequences of saying it? Yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah. so that is what the issue is. What is going to be the consequence if I say, you know, things are really hard for me. Yeah. I don't have an opportunity. I don't have a job. I don't have money to pay for my, my, my children's education. Yeah. Right? It's going to create a problem for me. And the other thing I have to mention very quickly is, can we put the babies in the back seat? Oh my. I mean, you know, I know we don't do car seats. Car seats are probably a luxury for a lot of mm-hmm. Dominicans. Mm-hmm. But I drive around and I cannot believe the amount of little babies oh I see God. sitting on the lap of mothers in the front seat of a car. And it's not being judgmental. It's a matter of safety. safety issue. It's a safety issue. It's not being judgmental and saying, well, you know, you all come here with your US rules and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. No, it's just a matter of safety. So, you Why know, you have somebody else sit at the front and you as the mom just sit behind a chair so that if there's yeah. a person, at least you have a cushion of the chair. Right. If you to there's a barrier. Your you know, yeah. even with the accidents and the number of accidents we seem to have been having lately, I, you know, I wonder, are we wearing our seatbelts? No, oh, forget that. You, don't, you, you notice I didn't even mention seatbelts, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that is that is not even a conversation to be had here. Mm-hmm. People don't wear it and they don't want to talk about it. But oh, I'm wow. just saying to protect the innocence of a child. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm very forget about seatbelts. We're not going to go anywhere with that conversation. Wow. But presence of mind to say well you know i'm sitting with a baby yes you sit at the front Mm -hmm. because maybe you're sitting at the front because all the other seats are taken but have somebody else sit at the front yeah just to protect that but i mean just people just do it like mindlessly they don't even Mm -hmm. think about it yeah they don't even think about it so i just thought you know i throw that in because i've seen it a lot i appreciate you saying that because from eight o'clock i'm going to be talking about this i think that in dominica it's time for us to bend or break mm-hmm. either we bend or we will break mm-hmm. we must bend in dominica or we will break and i will talk about some of the things i i see from my mm-hmm. perspective that tie into this the fear mm-hmm. and you know fear of talking a fear of retribution i think i have some ideas about where that stuff is coming from but I think sometimes, you know, when you maybe have been doing a thing for so long, yep. you might lose perspective. So you're not seeing. So it's like when you go away on vacation and you come back home, well, me anyway, and I realize, oh my God, I have all of this makeup on my. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> right? So <laughs> when you come back and you realize, hey, I thought I cleaned my house properly, but. What is yep. that? You know what I mean? Right. You right. love it different. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> if you're in it all the time, you know, mm-hmm. you, yep. you're, you're likely to lose perspective. Right, right. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now a little bit of the reality now. Yeah. Uh, the painful reality. You've been home. Um, when you went home. The, you know, the, you know, you know, you know, Kanisha, you know, Kanisha disappeared the day I got here, right? Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh my Three goodness. Three weeks ago. She like disappeared the Tuesday. Mm-hmm. What is it like on the ground at home? Well, you know, I think there are too many conspiracy theories. And, mm-hmm. and like we were talking about last night, it's time to redirect the energy. 
-hmm. right? So we have to continue the search. We have to continue the search. We have to continue praying for her. There's nothing we can do now. We have we have a right to be upset that the guy was killed and now he cannot help us with finding her. Mm -hmm. But we have to leave the search into the, the police. And we as a Dominican community yeah. here in Dominica and the diaspora now have to think, where do we go from here? And if mm -hmm. you recall, there was a lady who called and talked about how they formed the Marigot Mental Health Group. Yes. On Book, and I thought that was brilliant. Is that Ama? Ama, is that you that formed the, that the, the gardening club and the mental health awareness group? Is that the gardening club? Yeah. I wonder if that was Ama. Yeah, if that's you, type it in the chat, but definitely I remember. Yes. That. yes. So I thought that was a perfect example of the need to redirect our energy. Because yeah. spinning all these conspiracy theories, all that is doing is just increase, increasing the anxiety. Yes. Increasing. Yes, she said it was her. Oh, thank you, Amma. Thank you so much. That was an excellent contribution. Of course. That was an excellent contribution last night. So thank you so much for calling in. But how do we redirect that energy? Yeah. So what like Amma just did in your neck of the woods yeah. can you do about mental health challenges in your area because as you think of doing it on your end collectively we're solving a problem that's, that's the answer right? that's the answer that's, that's the answer. answer so our, our heart still bleeds for um little Kanisha, but uh, we have to now think what can i do what can you do? And we've already started talking about, you know, collaborative work, connecting yeah. counselors to people in Dominica, engaging Dr. Gina Leitan yes. on some of the conversation. She has resources. So you have resources. I have resources. Anna has resources. Pulling those resources together. Mm -hmm. So we're spending less time talking conjecture, talking, right. you know, what could have happened, what may have happened. Well, oh, well, who's to say he was the one who took the child? Those things are good, but what else can we be talking about? Yeah, that is actually positive. That involves taking positive action because yes. always, always more often than not, taking a positive action is how you neutralize pain energy. Mm -hmm. That's how you neutralize it. Do mm -hmm. something positive or yes. stop doing something negative. Mm -hmm. And that is part of therapy. Yes. That is part of therapy. So therapy, you know, speaking to a, a, a licensed psychologist like you is great as well. But therapy is also taking action. Absolutely. So that you're not just sitting, being overwhelmed in the depression. And I mean, I'm, I'm looking at Dominica politics and I'm seeing certain people who are posting like just about every hour. Every with hour. a different question regarding clinician. I'm thinking to myself, stop. Just stop for one hour, collect yourself, and say, okay, I'm not going to post for the next maybe three hours. Yeah. And just give myself an opportunity to think in terms of how can I help so mm -hmm. another condition doesn't happen again? Yeah. How can I help? What can I yeah. do yeah. right in my own area, my own space? Yeah. To stop something like this from happening again. And then go back to posting the Dominica politics if that's what you yeah. want to do. Yeah. But at because, least you'll be working on something. You know, part of what I'm going to talk about is the fact that we might not want to face it, but collectively we have agreed to this event as happening. Mm -hmm. All of us in and out have participated. Mm -hmm. We have. Mm -hmm. By what we've done and what we've not done. By what we've mm -hmm. said and not said. By how we've acted and not acted. And so we yep. have to seriously ask ourselves a question mm -hmm. as a collective, as a collective, but, but the collective is really the 70,11111 individual. And if the individual starts to change, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. If you do it and I do it and you over there do it, we all do it and dominate yep. the Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think this is the ideal time because you know in Roots Connections I talk a lot about tapping to our experts to help move Dominica forward. This is the perfect 
opportunity. Absolutely. This is the perfect opportunity to, to bring those skills together to do something productive that will move Dominica forward. I tell you what, it's happening. I, mm -hmm. I'm going to say it is happening because I've, I've received several calls just myself oh. alone. So I know many people are calling each other and yeah. saying, hey, what can yeah. we do? Because yeah, I'm and I have to go back. I have to go back and look at the comments from last night because I suspect there were a lot of people on on there that were making suggestions yes. that we we'll probably act on because we were so focused on solutions yes. that I think we will find that there were quite a few comments of people who are ready to act. As a matter of fact, I, I think I recall seeing one, so I'm going to yes. go back and look through. It's a lot, but <laughs> I'm going to go through. All of them. And that's the thing, I'm you know. All of them. We have to be willing to explore all the potential solutions and not just. You know, beat you know, beat it out of each other just because right. we didn't come up with it. Mm -hmm. We have to respect each other's individuality. You talked about our individual creativity. I mean, the evidence of how creative we are is that when oh. we leave Dominica, right? You see how we excel. You see how we excel. We have we have raw material. And I was having I was, I was having that conversation with a Porto. You know what? I I don't like to call politics. <laughs> politics uh i don't like to get involved in politics but um i was having a conversation with someone about that because he kept saying oh you know what what factories y'all keep talking about them they need factories that should have used the cbi money for factories blah 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 i told him well think of it this way think of it this way why are so many dominicans suffering financially here in dominica but as soon as we hit another country boom yeah yeah boom we just yeah. go crazy because we've never had opportunities and now we have all these opportunities so we yeah. have like six jobs yeah. and exactly. money doing like five different things so, exactly. so what does that say about the enabling environment in dominica and that is the basic question why is it that so many people are suffering on the ground but when they leave and go overseas they excel yes yes so it tells you something about the lack of an enabling environment on the ground. You know, and that I've, is the reality we don't want to talk about. Now, here's the thing. I've been reading. I posted the book. I, I posted a link to the book. Um, you can get it on audio on YouTube. Uh, it's called Atomic Habits. Mm -hmm. And I it's on the bestseller list for months and months and months and months. Mm -hmm. And and what that happens is because people are paying attention, mm -hmm. right? Now, I, I wrote a book called Do It Now, where I mm. study habits. How do you change your habits? Because, right. honey, I had to change many habits. <laughs> <laughs> I had to change many habits, like procrastination yep. and perfectionism, which is very Dominican, but it's very debilitating it when you have to know, try to succeed, and you're being a little perfectionist. Yeah, there's, that's a positive on one side, but it can hold you back because you don't yep. really, you know, you don't do because you hold yourself back. It's got to be good. It's got to be the best. It's got to be the best. Mm -hmm. Now that book talks about how if you only change your environment, yeah. many of us, we think to change a habit, like even like alcohol, too much alcohol or whatever, or we're not waking up on time. Many of us think that we are just bad people. Like we just are not strong people because we've made those resolutions for years and years. We're still working on them. Sometimes all you have to do is to change one cue in your environment. One thing you have to do that's different from the chain you used to follow and boom, you get the results you're looking for. Okay. Something as simple as, Hey, I want to work out. Like you said, love the gym. I want to work out. I gotta lose 20 pounds, right? If you would put your workout gear out the night before, before pretty, pretty workout gear, right? Yeah. You're looking forward to yeah. getting your little nice dandan. It's mm -hmm. there right away. As soon as you wake up mm -hmm. and you brush your teeth and you come straight back and put your workout clothes on, mm -hmm. you've already won half of that battle of getting to the yes. gym. Yeah. Yes, and you only changed one thing. One thing. And it's mm -hmm. environmental. So he says. Yeah. But in large measure, habits change when we change things in our environment. Yep. So we automate it. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to remind mm -hmm. ourselves about it. So mm -hmm. we have to think. We have to think now 
outside of the box because we are we are at breaking point. There is no there's no need to be idiotic about it. There's no need to be blind anymore. Now is the time to wake up because you know figuratively we have a bus full of passengers about to defile. Defile means you're going to go to the cliff. Okay. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, Alex will teach you that with Nepal. Yes, yes. I know that word, man. Come on. <laughs> yes, so what you go down a fall is, right. okay, depending on what action you take next. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is where we are at, and we have to explore options and potentialities that have worked for any other people. Yeah, yeah, but this is this is a huge opportunity, and I'm just waiting to see. I'm waiting to see how we as a society, we as a community, yeah. I'm waiting to see what do we do with this situation. Yeah. I'm waiting to see if such a tragic situation is going to just be, like you like to say, Doc, too short, too flat. Mm -hmm. We're excited. And I like how you put it that, you know, now that our adrenaline is slowing down because we yeah. cannot remain on that high forever the car will crash it will crash the car will crash if you stay on that high forever mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. now that things are starting to simmer down are we going to start changing the conversation it is now behind us Polly the Kanisha Etienne will continue talking about her forever and that is the end of the story or are we going to use this as an opportunity to create a movement that for, for finally, for once and for all, yes. tackles mental health. Yes. Because we've been having this conversation for what, 30, 40 years? Yes. We've been yes. having the yes. same conversation about the need for mental health resources in Dominica that doesn't just include waiting until the person gets bad enough to send them up to the, the psychiatric unit. You know what I mean? So that is what I'm waiting to see. Well, yes. Once the conversations, start to die down yeah. and we're prepared to do the work mind you absolutely to do the work. absolutely so i'm not pointing fingers and as you notice i'm saying what are we yeah absolutely. Going to do? what are we going to do are we going to just move on to the next conversation and we all know our favorite conversation politics i know i know so I know. so what are we gonna go back to oh is scary gonna call a snap election and electoral reform and only talk about that. We can walk and chew gum. At the same time. At the we same time. We can walk and chew gum. It doesn't it's have one to be all other. or none. That's right. It it's doesn't not have to be other. only talk about politics. It can be talk about politics. Yeah. And it can be talk about mental health. And it can be talk yeah. about child abuse. And yeah. it can be talk about economic opportunities. Yeah. But we it seems all like we're always one or the other. Well, well, I think this situation is at the point where the wound is so infected that there's no way to not talk about all of it at the same time. And mm -hmm. it's all hands on deck. We have to, we're, we're adults, we're an independent nation. We don't need saviors. Everybody's got their own stuff. And the kind of saviors we get in, they're not in our best interest because they're, nope. they're, they're, they're holding from other people. Yes. So they're they're to save themselves, themselves, not us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Amma has a great idea. Amma says, Amma says what she did, right? To respond to what she was, the error she was making, Amma says, is she was talking a bunch of politics and not mm -hmm. getting anywhere. It's yeah. only insanity. That's the definition of insanity. To keep doing something you see is not yielding the results you're looking for. Mm -hmm. That's the, they're calling that, you know, almost like dry and full calm. You crack yourself. Okay? because you know your, your level of mental health is not that you know to a need medication but your your reasoning the way you're looking at life it's not working mm -hmm. you keep right. doing something banging your head against the wall mm -hmm. she, said, she today the group now has 650 wow. that's nice that's and nice I'm so happy in dominica garden club so you mm -hmm. try and feel the energy of fear anxiety, rage, calling mm -hmm. each other bad names, all that kind of stuff that is so negative, it is mm -hmm. so heavy. These emotions are too heavy for us to make progress. To change that into something beautiful like gardening, that's mm -hmm. all Dominica. 
Yeah, and then and then she also says her da her friend Gloria Lawrence has Dominica music, more therapy. Absolutely. I mean, our music is my therapy. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then and then my sister is here, Sabria Senhouse, and she says, Well, part of it is lack of information and updates from the authorities on the search for Kanisha. Absolutely. Yeah. People want to help and most are left speculating. So true. Yeah. Dr. Trifi, your sessions have really helped people put things into perspective. And by just talking it out, Absolutely. that is very much you. See what I told you? How you're Thank really you. breaking it down and helping people to process what is going on. Because this is a traumatic event for the entire nation. At home and abroad. Yep. At home and abroad. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And then new and then newness is simple as making your bed every morning. Oh Absolutely. speaking my language. Absolutely. Yep. You know, yep. we, we there's so much information now that mm -hmm. I don't think we have the excuse anymore that we don't know. Because right. if you want to know GTS, you just type mm -hmm. it in. You just type mm -hmm. it in. And mm -hmm. so what we have to move from is not just collecting information. But now applying the information, mm -hmm. implementing mm -hmm. what we've learned. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I and, and I and I and I agree with you that it's already starting to work because I was in touch with Gina today and she said she's gotten responses already. Very nice. And somebody reached out to her as far as away as Marilyn. Wow. You know? So I think we just have to um keep hope alive. Yes. And just continue to have these conversations and yes. continue to figure out what is the next step, what is the next actionable step that we can take to keep the, the, the spotlight on mental health. And another person we want to involve in the conversation as well is Carlton Lando. Mm. Because he's very tell us passionate. About him. He's very tell me passionate. About him. As we start wrapping up this hour, can you yeah, tell me yeah. about him? Yes, I interviewed him in February of last year. I want to say February mm -hmm. of this year. And mm -hmm. he's very passionate. He wants to work on mm -hmm. anything that involves mental health. Mm -hmm. So he's already mm -hmm. someone we can include in a conversation yes. about what can we do? Because, I mean, think about it. He's with Jollies. I'm with q and So we already have a platform. Right. You have a platform. I have, like, several of them. So right. how can we use those platforms? Yes to do what we need to do because i don't believe in waiting on governments i don't believe in government policy because we'll be waiting forever and it's a it's a self-defeating posture to mm -hmm. allow any other human being that much control over yes. you that yes. you have to wait for them yes. to put something in your mouth yes. you have lost your dignity you've lost your mm -hmm. connection with your divine spark mm -hmm. if you take that posture Mm -hmm. It is not. That's where you have the paralysis. A lot mm -hmm. of paralysis. So we forget our individual creativity when we mm -hmm. decide that the government must do everything for yep. us. Yeah. It doesn't happen anywhere else on the planet. There's no way. There's no way the government can do everything. Cannot. Cannot. No. We gotta give them their blows for what needs to be done that we need, and we gotta speak up about it. Yes, but we have mm -hmm. to really tap into and remember. Remember who we are. That's what it is. Like, mm -hmm. we got <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, definitely, yep. Mm -hmm. Amma says also, my friend Ella Thomas is big on dental health. Simone, I believe you may know Ella from Convent. She's about mm -hmm. all this group. Yes. Right, right, right. So send us the names. Send us yes. the names. If you're all interested in helping and being a part of the conversation, because yeah. I would hate to see that after all of this, we just go right back to what we were doing before. And you That's know, it. who changes that we do. Yep. So we are changing. Yep. We are changing. Yep. Yep. So Doc, let me tell you, I am. I need for you to offer the people a, a parting few thoughts. What do you want us to remember? I'm so well, grateful. Well, for you. Yeah. Well, in terms of, of, of before you said, I, I got to big you up. I'm very grateful to you for like being a voice out there in the world. Like you're just showing up. You're consistent. You're mm -hmm. like. You're okay, but there's this need over there. I mean, you mm -hmm. talked about six jobs, but Doc, you're doing like 50 things at the same time, and you're doing all of them very well. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I want to yeah. give you 
Yeah. And, and I think a lot of it comes from uh, just being passionate about Dominica. Mm -hmm. Because I think like me and you and Amma and everybody else who, who follows our programs, we yeah. know where we come from. Absolutely. We know where we come from. We know what we've been through. Absolutely. But we know what we still go through, even if people think we make it look easy. Absolutely. Y'all got to wait to hear me talk about this. People think we make it look easy, like we have it all figured out, and we don't. Yes. We wake up every morning and we say, some days we say we're just going to put one foot in front of the other mm -hmm. and see what happens today, because we all go through our situations. Ah. Yes. And the final thing I will say, Doc, which is what I said on one of the programs I was watching, I was on is mind your energy. Mind your energy. Decide who you're going to give your energy to every day. It is not just because somebody's calling you out, calling out your name, calling you this, calling you that, that you have to give into the energy. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Let them call. They don't know you. They don't know you. So if they want to call you everything but the, a child of God, let them go ahead and do it. I see so many people just before somebody says something about them, they're ready to jump and 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 drag, jump into the gutter and jump into the fight. Let it go, let it go. So so that is always my my final thought. Mine your energy, preserve your energy for what you need your energy for, and let other people handle their energy the way they really want to. If they want to waste their energy doing unproductive things, doing uh, toxic things doing negative things, well, that's them. But what do you want to use your energy for? Because we can all see how quickly a day goes by. You know what I mean? So so that would be my, my final thoughts. And again, thank you so much, Dr. Trippy. Please continue to be the voice for us. I know it is exhausting. I know it is exhausting because I know how much energy counseling and being that voice can be. So you have to take care of you. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And I, and I love to see you on your nature walks because Atlanta is beautiful and green and we love it for that. But remember to take care of you, but continue to be that voice for us that is providing us with the information that we need to process everything that is going on with this whole situation and even beyond the situation because one of the things you touched on last night is the trauma from our ancestry i'm telling you we so have there's a lot to action. unpack there's a lot to unpack so continue going continue to be our dominican psychologist oh thank you Doc. <laughs> thank you so much enjoy dominica on my behalf you're going yes. to come back Soon though you're gonna come back soon. Though. Yes, yes, we're coming back this weekend, and of course, I'll link up with you. Awesome. All thank right, so I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, thank you, everybody on Facebook. I'll see you soon. Oh, All right, take care. I'm so uh -huh. thankful. Yes. Yes, I'm so thankful that Dr. Simone was able to come and hang out with the sister. Yeah, and talk and talk and share her travel therapy. Thank you all so much for showing up for her and me. And I am very excited to share a few more thoughts with you today, okay? So you all see, I have my, my son is a budding herbalist, so he has all kinds of <clears throat> lemon, key limes, grapefruit, orange, ginger, all kinds of stuff in this to help his mama throat and that cough delete 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 to go away okay so we are continuing to pray for kanisha's safe return <coughs> kanisha's safe return i think that it's my posture in life that all things can work together for good my posture in life too, that each of us has a mission on the planet and we don't know Kanisha's mission. We don't know why Kanisha is on the planet. I believe it's for something big and powerful based on all that is coming up and out as a result of this event. So we're going to keep praying for her safe return and we are we are also realistic 
and we know that every day that goes by, we might not get her back safe. We know that. But I really pray that at least we get her back to help all of us heal better. Because I've shared this with many people here all the time. I know how long it took me to recover from my mom's death because we did not have her body to say goodbye to. So I understand the importance of ritual in helping us come to closure on this. You know, I think the not knowing is going to be very painful for many people. And we gotta go day by day, take it day by day. Today, you all hear my, my voice. I am trying to, I listened to some very deep meditation, did some very grounding exercises to help myself because at least for today, I want to be calmer. Lene <laughs> um, says she misses my calm voice from travel therapy. You know, uh, Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything eh, under the sun. Hmm? And so tomorrow is more fire, right? <laughs> I'm like DJ Easy. DJ Easy, run this show. <laughs> right? DJ Easy. But then you had the little kid in the background saying, more fire, more fire. I'll try not to give too much fire tonight, but we got we to gotta keep talking. We've got to keep talking. So I think it's time in Dominica to bend or break. That bend or break idea, did your parents ever talk to you like this? If you don't want to hear, you will feel. It's bend or break. You better get it straight. Get it together. It's bend or break. Okay? I think this is a battle that's right now very mental. It's a mental battle because it's all in our thoughts. You see all the ideas we're posting and the back and forth on Facebook, even me, this is a mental battle. Okay, it's not physical. We're not out there fighting physically, huh? And it's not, it might be a spiritual battle, but it is manifesting right now in the mental realm. So everything in the universe is mind. There's a law in the universe called the all is mind. The universe is mental. And if you want to win many battles in your life, you got to look at it from a mental perspective. You got to fight the battle mentally. Okay. This is where I want to start with this. There used to be a time when people used to say that Dominica is dead or bon Dieu. What does that mean? That Dominica is at the back of God, is at God's back. Hmm? And that was not a nice thing we didn't use it in the positive sense huh we had no electricity in many of the villages no water stand pipe you have to go by a river to wash your clothes and pong your your jeans and brush your father's jeans on hard stone okay it's crayfish you eating hmm? I think we have some self-esteem issues that <laughs> developed as a result of this. You'd hear people talking about, oh, all the other Caribbean islands, they're more affluent than Dominica. Dominica is Las Cacarat, this, that, and the other. I think our self-esteem is still suffering a little bit. And I don't know if it's just about that, but I have some ideas. I think we started calling ourselves Nature Island of the Caribbean. You remember that? And we got a little bit of a boost. We're like, well, at least we're special. We have 365 rivers. But you don't have that though. Hmm? At least we are Nature Island of the Caribbean. Huh? I think that's working, you know, for us. But I think we still get hit. Our little self-esteem still get in a blow. When, when you go out there and you're telling people you're from Dominica, you're from Nature Island of the Caribbean, and they say, oh, yeah, I was there last week. And you ask them, tell me more. Where did you go? And they tell you, <laughs> Punta Cana, honey, Punta Cana. And you have to spend two hours telling them, uh-uh, wrong Dominica. You understand? So I think we still have some self-esteem issues. So back to the Dea do Bonte concept. I think collectively in the 70s and 80s, we decided to rise in consciousness. We were like, we're done with this business of we dare do bon Dieu. 
you hear Chubby talking about it. Chubby say it's solely a talon hole we like. And um, even if our foot breaking, but when talon hole is make up, tout moun ka sev y make up, mm, lipstick, cafe, why I I? Mm. So we did this rise in consciousness. It was, it was a shift higher. Mm. We free up. I mean, my little village of cottage didn't get electricity till I was about 10. So I lived for a big part of my life without electricity. Hmm? We had to buy our little block of ice in Portsmouth. We studied by kerosene lamps. We studied by candlelight. So now light come, light. When light come, hmm? what happens to darkness and shadow? No, you're not in the shadows anymore. You're not there do bon dieu anymore. There's no more proverbial darkness anymore. No, you're in the light. And we wanted that light. We wanted that shift to the light. Okay? We free up. Now everybody have cable TV. Mm? <coughs> Even if it was one person in the village with their little TV and you like this, trying to see World Wrestling Federation, everybody now start having their little TV. Okay, but being there do bon dieu was not all bad. My my brain works in a weird way, right? So when I think about being there do bon dieu in the shadow, right? If we behind God back, there's a shadow, you know, he's blocking the light. Okay, darkness, but protection. We were there do bon dieu. But what does, is it a psalm that says, ah, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That suggests protection and covering. And yes, we had our innocence because we were still there do bon So it was not all bad. It wasn't all bad. Hmm? I had a cousin who came from England and said when I was little, if you have never left Dominica, you're going straight to heaven. Because he said, Domni Chepani Peshi, meaning you, have not, you, you haven't seen enough of the world to have even committed sin. Because life in Dominica is so uh, uh, pure and innocent, it was, compared to England, which is where he was from. But think about this. Think about this. Now we've got cable TV. Hmm? Lights. Huh? Lights. Now we have bright lights. Bright lights hit. Everybody's on the street. When you're in the burning sun in bright light, what is it? More fire. Huh? The sun is hot. Heat. I think we're in the middle of the meat and soleil right now, taking our fire. Taking our fire. Now, how did that come about? In addition to cable TV, you all remember how hard it was to get a little visa even to leave Dominica? Right now, what is it? Everybody getting a visa, you know. You used to go Barbados and pay a little money, and there's people still sending you back home without a visa. Right now, a lot of our kids, because many people have already gone and paved the way, opened the way, they're getting green card by the time they're six, five years old. They don't have to wait for it anymore. Hmm? So the kids leave. They come over here for vacation, vacation, vacation. They come, they go to school. They see, they see, they experience, and a lot of them go back home with what they have picked up, what they've seen. All of us do. All of us too. There is a shift that we had to make from being Daya de bon Dieu to know we in the light. Know we in the light. But there's a law, another law of the universe. The universe works with laws, rules. And if you understand it, your life will become easier. One of those rules of the universe is that law called the law of polarity. Hmm? If there's light, there's darkness. Okay? And they're not all bad. Really, it's the same thing. It's the same thing at a different level. Okay? So, the same progress we made the same advancements we made also brought with them a lot of exposure. 
and heat and heat it's beautiful being out in the sun if you stay too long you will get sunburn you will brûler if you stay too long over a long period of time you will develop melanoma skin cancer okay it is beautiful but is more fire more fire on us it is hot chalet okay the thing is we've come too far already from the edobotier to being out in the sunlight right now is bend or break it's bend or break we all, we've come too far we've come too far there's no going back we have to learn how to tolerate the heat and all that bright light. We have to learn how to tolerate it. That same sun that helps plants to grow, it'll burn your dashing. Okay? I think perhaps maybe one of our biggest mistakes as we made the shift from day au bon dieu to in the middle of the bright light to where we even have Creole World Creole Music Festival. World we not Dominica Festival, no, not Dominica Creole Festival, Usa. We have World Creole Music Festival. We are, we're bringing international artists home right now. That's a huge shift in consciousness and mindset. One of our mistakes is one wrong move, one wrong move based on this mistake. And we're going over the fallers, you know one wrong move we have not brought our mentality back to the mental we have not brought some of the mentality from the edo bon dieu that we needed to bring and we have taken on some of the mentality in the big bright burning sunshine that we don't need it's not working for us so our mentality in large part I think did not evolve with us when we came into the light. It didn't come with us all the way when we came into the light. These kids we're talking about, like we were talking about last night, Dr. Simone and I, these kids that we're talking about, this is the first generation that has been completely exposed to that cable TV situation we're talking about. Because again, I was 10 and we were among the smaller villages, so we did not get cable TV right away. So I was about 10, 11, 12. I was doing my little Gilad, honey. Okay, every day I was doing my little Gilad um, workout when cable TV hit cottage, okay? But our kids who seem to be struggling so much, and there are lots of reasons for that. This is the first generation from birth to now, exposure, bright light, bright light exposure. First generation, everybody getting visa, everybody on vacation, hmm? hot gold summer, everybody out. First generation of kids who are just going off to college like this. It's the first generation, but, but they are born to parents like me and parents like you, and I'm saying like you because that generation, a lot of them not on Facebook, you know, that is old people thing. My kids, they're like, mom, Facebook, mm -mm. They're on Insta, they're on TikTok, they're on Snapchat, they're on Tumblr. Facebook, for a lot of them, is for those old people, you know, like us. Okay? What we did is we, we wanted, we shifted in consciousness. We went higher. We wanted to do better for them than we had. But we didn't have a roadmap. We didn't have a, we didn't have people who showed it to us. So we were creating this thing as we went along, kind of like an experiment, if you ask me. But this is just how life works as people evolve and change. It's how life works everywhere. Okay. We didn't know how to raise this generation of kids who have, who, who, who have, access to cable tv in the in 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 their living room because we bought the cable tv did we have parents who were telling us how to manage our tv time no so we didn't know what to tell them 
We really didn't know. We were making it up as we went along. Some of us did it one way, some did it the other way. How many of us had phones when we were growing up? No GPS, we had no GPS, Anthony. We had no smartphones. How could we tell them? How did we even know if they were going on 4chan? You all know about 4chan. How did we know if they were going on Reddit and all of these and, um, um, weird sites? Did we know when they started going on to Pornhub? No. Did we know they were getting sucked in on their little phones we gave them to stay connected into just bottomless pits of darkness? We didn't know. So how would we know what to tell them? We, we were using the template of parenting that our parents gave us and applying it on a completely different generation, exposed to completely different things. In many ways, it really wasn't our fault. We didn't have the information. We didn't have a template. We didn't know how to do it. So I think a lot of that generation raised themselves on many things. They raised themselves. And we didn't mean for it to be this way, but life evolved. And we are also trying to catch up. So I'm saying, I mean, I'm trying to encourage you to try to cut yourself a little slack. Although a lot of that responsibility for what's happening with our children, because parents are supposed to train their kids, right? A lot of that falls on us. A lot of that, it's, it's got to fall on us. I see kids many, many, many times. I've seen them over the years and they come in and the parent is like, Johnny is bad, out of control, not doing right. <clears throat> Johnny has a problem, the child, right? And then when you start digging, you realize it's not the, a child problem, it's a family problem. It's a system problem, okay? And once again, like I was, Dr. Simone and I were saying, once you figure out what you can shift, what you can change over here in the environment, sometimes you see a big, big, big improvement in behavior, okay? I think our generation, we're kind of confused. We're not sure if we want to be dead or bon dieu, or what we want to be still dead or bon dieu with, or if we want to be here right now in the bright sun. Because a lot of what we had back there was heaven it felt so good but we got to be here so it's like one foot over there one foot here i think it's paralyzing us it's paralyzing us in many areas and when we're not paralyzed we're having to learn real fast real fast so bear with me here for a second that mentality that we need to shift Couple, couple of them. Tribalism. What's tribalism? Mm. It comes from that, again, I'm a country girl. Sazination. Do you know what is a sazination? A sazination is when people start fighting. When a group of people start fighting. It's Creole word. Group of people start fighting. I used to stay on the little hill where I lived and in the village on a Sunday afternoon, you would hear, he gas, he gas. A family had started fighting with another family. I don't know if it was similar in your village, but I'm telling you, I saw a lot of that going, growing up. A sense of tribalism, the group, group think. We all, because we have La Pewes, La Pewes is we kind of scaredy cats. You know, we're kind of afraid to do big things without company. We like company. We like company. And nothing's wrong with that. Back in the day, back in the day, right there in the day of Bon Dieu, without electricity, you better be walking at night in the unknown with somebody. Okay? We're afraid of darkness and the unknown. Our kids tell us they want to do art or they want to do something digital. And we're like, what is that? What is that? You better get your degree in nursing or engineering or become a something that we know about. 
Okay? The thing is, we cannot have it both ways. And it's us. It's my cohort. It's you and me. It's the people who are on Facebook. It's you who are listening to me. We can't have it both ways. But maybe we can. What we got to do is find balance. Find the balance. We have to own up to our part in this whole debacle that's happening with poor little Kanisha and Kian Alexander as a collective, as a collective. I'm saying we cannot just point at everybody else, okay? One wrong move as a collective, I'm telling you, and that bus of passengers, it going on in Ifales, Dominica, is at a bend or break position. And I don't care what you think, this is what I think, okay? Anthony, you said we had no GPS and there were no guns. You are correct. We're in the bright light now. We're in the heat now, in the fire now. We're in the fire right now, okay? We're in the fire. The thing is, when you, when you decide to, any move you make, any move you make, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So any move you make, even if it's a positive move, it's going to put things out of place and it takes a while to get it back into place. Huh? It takes a while. So I think we're still figuring this out. I think all of us can agree that that tribalism that makes us so mal parlant and so red or blue, it has brought us to a halt. It's brought us to a standstill. And it is our mindset from the Edo Bondier where my people are my people and Sazinacion, if you hit my sister, my whole family will fall on you. Hmm? I am not going to listen to what you have to say. That has to change. It's got to come into the light. It's got to come into the light of these societies like this, like Atlanta, like here, where we've come over and we've learned, we've learned, hey, you can talk through your problems. You don't have to get into a he gas. You can disagree and still go out for drinks afterwards. It is okay actually to disagree because in the disagreeing, you get all of this energy for new ideas, for new ideas, okay? I think that our government in large measure in large measure, is also stuck like us, okay? <clears throat> Here we are, we have, what you call it, Kempinski, bright sunshine, bright light, we up there, we're in 2022. I love the idea of the housing revolution. Excellent, excellent, excellent. But we still dare do bon dieu when we don't have a mental health system to take care of our people because we think we don't have those problems. We still dare do bon dieu when we're not creating enough economic opportunities that are sexier than the guns, Anthony. That is sexier than the fast money. We still dare do bon dieu when we think that this generation is like us because they came from us. No, we need to find out from them what turns them on? Because what is turning on this generation is not the stuff that used to turn us on. Stuff that used to turn us on was doing the right thing, was doing what our parents said, being a good girl, being smart in school. These kids, this generation is about, hey, this is my thought, my belief. I'm going to do what I want to do. I want to be independent. I'm a free human being. Don't you tell me what to do. So we're talking two different languages. And so we're passing each other. We're not communicating. We're missing each other. And how do you stop missing each other? You stop and you have conversations. You have conversations. You have conversations. Okay? The reason why this is crucial and is either bend or break 
is because if we allow this problem to keep growing with our youth, you're going to see the 10 murders. And it's not yet even the end of half the year. This is, this is not unique to other people. It is unique to Dominica. We, that's not new. That's not, um, that's, that's new for us. That's brand new for us. We're not used to that. It's too much for us. It's too much. If we keep this posture where we want to keep the Diedo Bonte attitude when it comes to job creation for our youth, hmm, you're going to have sociological problems. You cannot help but have sociological problems. And let me tell you, in every culture where you've had a small part of the country have a lot of money, a lot of wealth, and then you have a certain sector where there's not a lot, you better watch out. You better watch out because people stop caring about the whole. And they start saying, you don't care about me, so now I don't care about you. I'm going to do my own thing over there. So as Dr. Simone and I were saying, we got to move now to solutions. We've got to move now to engaging our professionals who have spent a lot of time in other people's countries, very often studying how to fix these problems. And there are many of us, there are many of us who know how to fix it. So the government has to do that, but we the people also have to stand up and do it ourselves too. Okay, we have to stand up and do our part. So me, y'all, I don't need anybody's permission to show up here when I want to, if I want to, and share information about mental health. And that's one area, okay? That's one area. We need our young people to learn how to be entrepreneurs, how to come up with business ideas and sustain these businesses, how to use their divine creativity to generate money I had a young man recently tell me, yeah, my mom is afraid for me. She says, you know, I keep getting into trouble, but I don't have the patience to wait for money to come to me the way she's telling me money should come to me. So what does he do? He offends, right? And he ends up sometimes getting caught, sometimes not getting caught. Do you understand? Now for that child, he's still a child. For that young man who grew up in the bright sunshine, bright light, bright light, bright light, access, 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 we need to have a conversation. We need to have conversations to determine, hey, what is it going to take for you to leave that, to shift from that, to do something better? Because if not, the bus will go over the fallies. Yes, some things need to stay. Or could me, or nati well, or hard work, or ethics, okay? Or conscience, or love for people, or looking out for each other, like the young lady who called her boyfriend and helped Dr. Simone. These things have to stay. They're from the Edo Bondier, but we got to bring them into the light. It's okay. But that crippling mentality where it's us against them, just because we are from different points of view, that's going to cripple us. When it's already crippled, it's paralyzed us. It's paralyzed us right now. We have to learn to tolerate the brightness of the sun, regardless of if we on fire, you know, because there's no going back. There's no going back. There's no going back. We need a mental health system that works. We have a lot of unhealed trauma on the island with no access or let's say very little access, because you now you have people like Dr. Leighton, like Gina Leighton, right? And Miss Masticott, and I know of Dr. Wallace. There's another Dr. Wallace, that's right. There are lots of us Dr. Wallace is all over the place, right? We have to stop using each other's weaknesses against 
each other. I think the government and the political system has a way of doing that. I think they, they, I think they capitalize on that kind of group think that comes from that time when we were more tribal, more dead Ubuntu in the shadow. In the shadow, yes. In darkness, yes. But more under God's protection. The way that God protects the innocent. That's the kind of protection we used to have there in that darkness and in the shadow. But we cannot go back. We've got to keep moving forward. So I would love to hear your ideas. I would love to hear your ideas. Some of what I think about, again, are more conversation with this generation, with our young people. Those little guys who get in trouble and who shooting each other up, I'm telling you there's an alpha out there on the block. What do I mean by that? There's a boss. There's one that is the, that's the, that's the man. There are a couple, one, two, three, there might be. Hmm? Have conversations with them now to listen and hear so that we can neutralize that vibe. It's gotta be neutralized now, but we won't know how to neutralize it if we're just saying, oh, those children, they're so bad. Oh, those young boys, they're just doing this, they're just doing that. That's not how you fix that. You fix this with conversation, man-to-man -man conversation, because again, they don't have the same level of respect for authority that we do. So you gotta come at them with your full respect and have proper conversations, one-on-one. -on -one. There's gotta be more equity in the way we divvy up resources on the island. It can't be based on tribalism. It can't be based on, it is not gonna work. It's not gonna work, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. It is not gonna work if we say, because my government is in power, then you, all my people gonna get jobs and the others don't. Those that you don't, they might be more qualified than those that belong to your group. So are you putting Dominica first when you do that? No, you're not. No, you're not. We can, it's time to stop looking to other people too, to save us. We have to save ourselves. We have to save ourselves. And very, very important, hey, we're, we're at risk right now. We're at risk. The kind of people we're asking for help don't care about us because they don't care about other people. Based on what they've done to other people, they are not looking out for us. They're not for us. We might see a few little things in our eyesight, but this kind of stuff is not trustworthy. And I'm not saying more than that because all of us are wise people. Okay, all of us are wise people. We have to become and stand up in the bright light of the sun as independent people. We are an independent nation. So we have to learn to figure out our problems ourselves. Because anybody you get to help you, nothing in life is for free. It's another law of the universe. You got to pay for what you get. Are we ready to pay the cost of what we're getting? I say now is the time to bend before we break. Okay? The tribalism, yo, the stuff that's happening with Kanisha, it cannot be filtered through politics, mistake. We will miss, we will miss the opportunity and we're not gonna miss it this time. We're not gonna miss it this time. That sassy nasty mentality where we're ready to fall on each other like flies on you know what? We got to pull back from that. That's one of the Daya do bon Dieu. Daya do bon Dieu. Attitudes. We got we to gotta surrender it. We got to let it go. And keep the spirit of collaboration. Keep the coup de vibe. Keep the cooperation vibe. Keep the Nati well vibe because we can't afford to lose that, okay? So tonight I'm saying, let's wake up. Let's wake up. Nobody can fix it but us, but we have everything we need to fix it, okay? We've got everything we need to fix it.
Let me see what some of y'all are saying. Elvin, thank you very much. Thank you very much for showing up. And I said tonight, you know, I'm taking it down a notch. I need a little rest. I need a little medicine. But I understand that this is not a one time deal. So <clears throat> I have to commit to myself and to Dominica to keep speaking up and speaking loudly. So tonight, like DJ Easy, I'm taking it easy, but tomorrow is more fire. Is more fire because look, the problems are there. They're not going away. They're not going away now. So I cannot go away. And I want you to stay too. I don't want you to go away. I don't want you to get so exhausted. There's something called compassion fatigue where we get so tired of feeling sorry for Kanisha and her father that we start plugging out. We start unplugging. And we're like, well, look, my child, sick we, I, my attention has to go over there. That's true, but we, gotta, we, we can do all of it at the same time which is what Dr. Simone was saying. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can keep taking care of our families as life keeps coming hard at us. Again, we brill in the sun, but, but, but we still have to fight and talk and scream and yell and advocate for a better mental health system in Dominica. It's more than time. We've been out in the sun for too long. Okay, we bring in and we bring in so much. The whole community is paying the price. We got to deal with this. Okay, there are not enough opportunities for young people to generate income sustainably on the island. We have to make staying in Dominica more attractive to people who are born on the island. We have to make coming back home more attractive to Dominicans who are ready, ready to come home, but are terrified because the this, this situation is not conducive to living your best life. All of us want to live our best life. All of us want to live our best life. And all of us want to see Dominica prosper. Many of us are ready to come home. We need support when it comes to the systems because it doesn't make sense to come down to Dominica and you have to run back up to Florida when you have a little sneeze because somebody at the hospital is not willing to take care of you or there's some nonsense going on. You understand? And when we don't fix these systems, everybody loses out because now the people who could be coming back and pouring back into Dominica, they cannot. And they ought not to, because why would you put yourself at risk? Huh? Why would you put yourself at risk? You're getting older in age. You have things like your health system that you cannot depend on. No, we have to, the government has to make sure these things are proper because those things cost too much money. Us, the individuals, us, the individuals, we have to one-on-one, -on -one, each man, each person, each woman, do your part. Do your part. Get sharper, get better, do more. And do more together again, because that's who we are. That's who we are. You know, the I, when I see people on Facebook saying Dominican saw this and Dominican saw that, I quickly check them because it's not true. Because Dominica, I know everybody helping you, just like Dr. Simone just said. A random person. That would never happen over here. You better put your big money outside and you better wait in line. Is next week we can bring it for you? Is next week we can bring it for you? If you have to wait two weeks, because that's what our schedule say, that's what it is. So we have to keep, I'm telling you, we bring forward, bring forward. You know, like those people who balance their books, balance their checkbooks, your accounting, bring that balance forward that we're keeping. Hmm? and leave for those people those things that don't work for us in Dominica, okay? 
because all that glitters out there in the sunshine is not gold. Okay, and we don't want it, and we know better. So, this is my offering for tonight. Linnea, how are you, Linnea? I'm happy. I saw that you did some planting tonight to calm yourself. Look, working in the soil, and Amma, working in the soil, gardening is one of the most therapeutic and healing things because it's a grounding activity. Okay, so you see how electricity, they have to ground electricity. We are beings of electricity and beings of light as well. We need grounding. So that's why grounding, playing in the dirt is so important. That's why we're making a, a mistake when we don't garden more in Dominica. These are things that we can bring forward with us because you know our, our elders, they are grounded, man. All of them had their little flower garden or their little vegetable garden right there by their house. And, and those who could had their garden up in the mountains. Okay? So these are things we have to keep doing and that we can do. That's in your power to do, Lenny. You don't need a government to help you to do that. But the things that the government has to do for us, I'm asking them to listen to us more. Listen to us, you know. Again, if you have half of the brain only generating ideas, you know, it's, it's not enough. You, you need the cohesion, you need all, and you need the resources of all of your citizens, of all the citizens, whether or not they agree with our policies or not. They were born on the island for a reason. And what they have to offer to Dominica, it's unmatched. It cannot be copied. Okay, so the government would be making a mistake. <coughs> Sorry, to continue, if Dr. Simone is correct, to continue maybe uh, being tough and, and placing retribution on people who disagree or who have other ideas, that is not a way, that's not a winning way. That's not a winning way. Okay? So, Anthony, you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. I want to thank all of you for showing up. I'm going to keep drinking my little shof of ginger and lemons and oranges and grapefruits, all of that. And I hope you all have a good night. Okay. Hi, Olivia. Hi, my sister. Thank you, you say, for sharing your time and knowledge with us. You're an inspiration to many of us. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Stay safe, stay blessed, and continued healing for that cough. Thank you so much, Olivia. I tell you, the stress of the past two weeks, today I walked around feeling like I just wanted to cry. You know, I just wanted to cry because I'm at a point where I'm, I'm sure like many of you thinking like, oh my goodness, like what exactly has happened to her? I think we were looking forward to at least when Kian Alexander was alive, we had hope. We had so much hope that even if they were out there, he was feeding her and it was horrible that he had taken her. If he's the one who actually took her, you know, because you know, these things are, you know, legal situations, you know, they're legal definitions on right and wrong. So at least we thought, even if he has her in a hole somewhere, he knows how to live off the land so he can feed her and he can give her water. But at this point, you know, it's just really disheartening. And we have to, we have, we're going to have to do a lot to heal as a community. I, I told somebody today, I wonder what it would look like for, for all of us if the leader of the government now and the opposition leader uh, stood together, made a statement together with the flag of Dominica. You know, I, I'm a dreamer sometimes, but my dream is not all that far off because I remember when Bob Marley did that with uh, Siaga and the other guy, Manly, and how healing that was for Jamaica when he did that. 
yeah, we, we are people, people of deep symbolism. And so I wonder what that would do for us as a community, because we're a community at home and abroad, no matter where we are, like I say, Japan, Mexico, Alaska, we, we live and we exist as if we are still in Dominica. And again, like I say, we, we went into a little bit of psychosis for a while where we thought, oh, Dominica can work just on half of its brain, but no brain, no human being, no, no organism can function well if you're using half of its capabilities. And that's what we're doing if we're being tough. And the thing is, because the government hasn't changed much, which is another problem, I don't care what you think. I, 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 I don't care what you think. That's another problem when you have one system in the same spot for that long. It's going to need servicing. You know, it's going to need servicing. And a lot of the people, this is the first time this has happened in our culture where we've had one government last for so long. Do you know how many people who after 10 years were hoping for a newness or a shift, a change, you know, even if it was just for one term, you know, I think, I think that is messing with the mental health of a lot of people too. I think that might explain why some people are so frustrated on Facebook. And that's not, that doesn't shock me because if you're doing the same thing for so long, and if the thing you're doing is keeping out half, some people, if half of the people feel like you're keeping me out, that means for 20 years, you have half of your population who has been feeling left out. How can that not breed problems? Y'all think about it. Like just as a normal common sense, how would that not breed discontent in that half that is having to say, well, I want to say some things, but I cannot really say it because I'm afraid of what will happen or what won't happen for me. So we're making a mistake as a collective to think that th that's not a problematic system. Hmm? Um, I'm not a politician, like I say, I just see, I have thoughts and I share them. It'll resonate with some people, it won't resonate with some people. I think that, you know, on the flip side, that the opposition like really has to do some soul searching and ask themselves questions like, well, why for 20 years have the people said no to you? Because that's also what they're saying. They're also saying no to you. So I think we're adults. I think we have to look at like real things. So what what is the opposition doing or not doing that the system has had to, that people keep saying yes? Okay, what needs to be different? Attitude from the leading party has to shift. That's kind of hard. Um, attitude from the opposition has to shift. That's kind of hard too, you know. Um, but I, I just, I just don't like that. In a way, we the people are caught in the middle, and so I think we the people have to free ourselves from the paralysis. <laughs> you know, we have to free ourselves from the paralysis, and and do more for ourselves. Okay, we have to do more, um, become more involved. <coughs> um, Olivia says, she's so confused with the situation. So many unanswered questions. Yes, we will all need healing from this. May Jehovah give us clarity. I'm praying for that every day. I'm praying for that every day, Olivia. And But I think that everything is is doing its thing also so there's a part of me that thinks <clears throat> that all of this that's happening is working towards something because that's how i see things play out in my life so my assumption is that's what's happening collectively 
because the energies, you know, energies change and interact and one action causes another reaction and all of that. And so I'm staying high like you and asking God, asking most high for help, figuring out, well, what is the next step do I take as an individual? What is the next step that I, you know, I have to take as a human being, as a person from Dominica? Yeah, I think that the government, the mentality of the politicians didn't shift much from the day of Bondier in that they, or, or may, even, even though their, their mentality, <coughs> sorry, shifted, they, are using it against us. They're using our groupthink against us. They're using our mentality for assassination and tribalism against us. And so we have to wake up and say, hey, hey, I know we're on the same team. I like your policies, but half of our country is not being utilized. And the answers to many of our problems are going to lie in the other half. Do you see how in some movies you'll have one person has this key, the other one has this key, and they might not like each other, but until they work together, the, the treasure chest doesn't open. It feels like that for me. Okay, it feels like that for me because there's no way that we can only utilize half of the country's brain so well that it'll be good for everybody. No, we need all of us. We need everybody's brain tapped in. All of our resources, okay? Yeah. Um, Lene, you say we are natural and we have so much magic, y'all, in Dominica. I'm telling you, you know, and those of you who can sense energy, you know it. We have so much magic in Dominica. Always have, always will. The land, always will, always have. And our people too. But our people, if our people go into a state of sleep and paralysis, they forget. And th their forgetting is because they're, they're being so emotional. But I think people are also playing on our emotions. And we have to learn to stop being so reactive as individuals, as people but make clear choices for ourselves based on what is working for us or what is not working for us. Healthcare, mental healthcare, it's neglected. We got to do better. We got to come into the sunlight with that. We need to rise from the ashes. Yes. Uh, yes, you, you know you're right. Our mind is still back there in the shadow of the behind God's back. Again, God's back was providing us protection, huh? but it was also shade like darkness too. You know, a little dark. So the mind, when we made the shift forward into the bright light, the mind didn't grow with the, with the shift. The mind stayed small back there in the day du bon Dieu place. We got to open it up. Hmm? Yeah. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good rest of your Thursday. Try to take it easy. Like I said, if I have life and breath, I'm going to be up here. I have plenty fire for a lot of people that they got to listen. We got to listen. And some of us, as you can see, you see it's not plenty of us that listening to the sweetness and light. Yeah, we've become a little bit jaded. We like drama. We in the assassination mentality. We are more in the sazination. But then again, everything is that law of polarity. It's just, it's just different levels, right? So if you think of sazination, don't dare, fight, he goes, ah. But in what we're doing tonight, I am saying that's a higher level of conversation. Mm -hmm. But uh, our people are a little bit stuck down there in large measure for now. So that's, that's why I have to come down a little bit. I cannot be a... Or else my conversation, I'll be talking up here. So I have to come here and talk. If I want to see anything. So I, I say thank you to all of you who showed up tonight for, for the talk. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, there's a time and place for everything. And so tonight, this is what we're doing. So I'm going to tell you all peace. I'm sending you all love and light. And with you, I'm praying for resolution on Kanisha's situation. So let's just keep praying for her, that her life, her life is for her highest good, for all of us, our highest good as well, as a country. Okay? Bye, y'all. Good night. Sleep well. Don't be bien.